guest today is Sarah Lean. Sarah, how are you? I'm good, thanks, David. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It is a pleasure to meet you. I've, I've known your name and I've seen your face many times, but uh, we've <laughs> never actually met in person or even virtually until now. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, it's good to meet you. It's good to make this connection. So, What do you do, Sarah? So I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, which generally means I travel around the world and speak at conferences and talk to audiences and get product feedback from them. But at the moment, we're obviously all grounded and stuck at home um, from this pandemic. So at the moment, I'm creating lots and lots of content and that's in the forms of blogs, doing things like this, podcasts, um, creating my own videos to go on YouTube and I'm basically trying to still keep connected with the community while we're all at home at the moment. So my job's slightly changed, but um, yeah, that, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> you said slightly changed. It sounds like it's changed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, so, if my understanding, your job was to travel to different places yeah. and meet face to face with people. And now yeah. uh, we actually got, I work for Microsoft <laughs> as well. And we had a directive saying, unless it's absolutely essential, do not yeah. travel. Yeah. So when I when the job's kind of normal and we're all allowed to travel, I should be creating content like blogs and videos anyway. But yeah. um, as you know, when you're in the airport lounges and traveling, it's really hard to kind of be that productive. Um, so that's why I say it's slightly changed because I've just changed the focus of the content I'm creating. <laughs> <laughs> you have a more comfortable sharing how to create that content. <laughs> Well, how how over the obviously it's the 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 COVID nineteen pandemic is what's precipitated this whole thing. It's, it's changed me yeah. as well. This whole show that I do is used to always be in person. In fact, I swore up and down I would never do a virtual interview. I would always be face to face with people. But uh, now I I either have to go on hi- hiatus or switch to this format. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so t- tell me, how have you adjusted then? Uh, what's what are the big changes? So I've kind of upped my game in terms of my home office. So um, when this all started to strike a bit, I invested in building sound panels for my room and my office. And you can actually see one behind me. That's what that big oh. pattern is. What does um, that do? It's a, so it helps stop the noise. Um, you know how the room's empty, you get this really echoey sound um, with audio and stuff. The sound panel actually has like insulation in it that kind of traps the noise and makes it more professional sounding so i've got three of those around my room so um that was a project i was going to do at some point this year but obviously now i'm at home that got accelerated so um i did a blog post around all of that and the before and after um kind of effects of what they've done to the audio is actually quite remarkable for a couple of hundred box of stuff you can buy at a DIY store so um that's slightly changed um my kind of home office setup at the moment so well, that's interesting I wonder if I should invest in that if I'm going to be doing this I I have um uh I have one big room I live in a condominium so it's not a oh, big okay. place I essentially have a bedroom and a giant living room slash office slash kitchen and uh <laughs> and I wonder if it uh, if it's even worthwhile because I see the far wall is pretty far away hmm um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I kind of did a wee bit of research, like on YouTube, and and read what um, some other sound people are doing. Um, and my room's kind of small, so it should be a single bedroom. Um, so the panels are quite effective here for me. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that was something that I enjoyed doing, and has obviously great benefits when I'm doing things like this and right. recording videos at home. Um, makes it sound a wee bit more professional, hopefully. <laughs> oh, well, you do sound great, and I love your Scottish accent. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? What's uh, t- Tell me about some of the other adjustments you've had to make. Um, so the other adjustment is my husband's now working from home as well. So that's quite interesting because he never works from home. He's always <laughs> office-based. Um, so he's now um, in situ on our kitchen table. Now which you're is to know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've kind of reverted actually to being desktop support. So I've been in IT for like 14 odd years. And I started off doing first level support. So I was that person that people would phone up and say, can I reset my password? That would be my job. Ooh, and I've that's, kind a, of that's, a, that's a thankless job, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've almost reverted back to that, trying to fix various issues with his um, setup that his work have given him. He's printing, trying to figure out how to do dual screens, setting him up with a keyboard, you know, all those fun things that he's, he's navigating. So 
Um, and I've also been doing that remotely for some of my friends as well when they've got stuck. Um, some people have wanted printer advice, like which printer to buy to print off some of their kids' like homework and stuff like that. Um, yeah, various different kind of help desk calls have um, taken up quite a bit of time as well. Um, it's like a second job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's so funny because some of my um, friends and family are their work haven't updated things so they're still running like Windows 7 and some of the technologies that we want to see as legacy right um so it's interesting that I'm having to dial back into that knowledge of stuff that I did years ago and remember how to do things um so it's come back oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm grateful <laughs> I did that uh, I actually upgraded a computer of mine that had been sitting in a closet for about three or four years and it was running an early Windows 10 but it took hours literally hours yeah. just to install the updates <laughs> and three reboots yep yep so uh so now you're like a a, a support engineer in addition to your day job yep yep in are, are, you, are you still doing some of the things um uh that you used to do uh when you traveled are you still trying to do the same conversations the same presentations that i know developer audio are do have you have you just adapted yeah. to that or is that pushed aside until this crisis is over mm, a little bit of both so there's some conferences i was due to speak at next month um that have been obviously cancelled or postponed to next year um but what i want to do with the content i was going to present at those events is try and record them and either put them on youtube or try and host a live teams meeting or something where i can still share that content with the community and get feedback as well um, i know these live events and remote events are not always 100 percent great and everybody loves that personal connection we get right. with conferences but i still think the content that i was going to be delivering is relevant and i still want to try and share that so i'm i'm trying to change tact so i'm trying to figure out the best way of presenting that now that i'm not in person um and try and anticipate maybe some of the questions i would have got um, from the audience and answer them during the video um, or be around so like YouTube I was thinking of using their premiere feature where you schedule content and release it at a certain time of day okay. and then I can watch along with the audience and then if they have questions I can answer them um, in the chat window so there's different things I'm thinking about in terms of still delivering that conference content but in a different way so hmm. okay so these are uh this is content that uh, for a conference that suddenly isn't happening anymore. Are, are you yeah. scheduled to speak at any of these uh, conferences? Some of the conferences have just moved to online. They've just changed mm -hmm. the format. Are you doing any of that? Um, none of the ones that I've actually was due to attend in person if I went to virtual. Um, I think just the nature of the uncertainty and as you know, a lot of these events are run by community people like in their spare time. So yeah. um, trying to run their day job maybe juggle a family now that's at home with them while they do their day job plus a conference I don't think is maybe feasible for every conference organiser right sure um, so yeah I haven't had any that have changed to virtual at the moment yeah as a, a cloud advocate you focus on a particular part of technology right what is that? Um, yes, so my team focuses on Azure and then we actually focus on the IT pro um, infrastructure um, engineer type side of things um, for a lot of our organisation, you know, hybrid technologies um, with Azure. So a bit of on-prem and a bit of Azure at the moment. So that's my focus and my team's focus. How do you think the tech, that evolving technology, the stuff that you're, you're working with and talking with every day has uh, affected your ability now? to do this your job remotely like if this had happened five years ago versus now okay. is it is oh, it yeah. easier now because of this and if so how i think so i think some of the tech the definitely when i think back to what i was using five or six years ago we probably wouldn't have been able to do even this meeting and um, we might have been able to do it through skype but i don't think skype maybe five or six years ago was was in the right place for us we certainly wouldn't have had all the good audio gear and maybe like the high definition cameras that we've all got um so yeah i think nowadays it's definitely changed how we work um you know i don't know how how popular youtube was even five or six years ago right um so yeah different there's different mediums and different things twitter stuff like that all has changed how we interact with everybody now um, so there's definitely lots of things to be positive about in this current pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always used, uh, I w mostly work from home 
but I do travel a lot, or I used to anyway. And I've always seen things like uh, like teams, like social media, as a way of maintaining these relationships in between the times that I get yeah. to see people. You know, every once yeah. in a while, I'll establish a relationship with somebody that's exclusively online because they're so far away, like like you are. Uh, but um, uh, but often it's just, oh yes, yeah, I only see you once a year, but uh, in between we could have conversations. It's not the yeah. same, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, do you have any insight into uh, Azure itself and how the platform is handling this scale as all of us are working from home? Mm. I think as we've seen in a lot of the press, Azure's had a bit of issue capacity in Europe wise in terms of everybody suddenly consuming. Um, but you know, that's that's great because a lot of these, organ well, for me, it's great because a lot of these organizations have always had some kind of blocker that stopped them going to Azure, whether it be security, whether it be the knowledge of their IT team, and suddenly they're now adopting it, right? They're still, they're exploring it and having a go. Um, yes, there are some challenges around capacity, but we're trying to address that. And hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll address that internally and fix that for everybody. But I think it's great for people to, to take the chance and have a go at some of this technology and try and leverage better solutions for the organization. So. Yeah, I, I have, uh, I'm optimistic that we're gonna come out of this at some point in the future. And that might be in six months, it might be in a year, it might be longer, I don't mm. know. I have no uh, insight into that. But um, when we do, do you think that uh, this, this will change us, that the way we work and the way we interact will be different because of this experience? I think so. I think we're seeing organisations who have traditionally stopped that working from home um, pattern for their employees suddenly being able to be productive. Like like I said earlier on, my husband's company were completely in the office for their office staff. Um, but he, I hope, or he, by the sounds of what's going on in the kitchen, he's still as productive as he was in the office and he's still been able to maintain those chats with his colleagues and stuff. So maybe they'll change their policy. Maybe they'll be thinking about it different. And that's just one organisation, right? All my friends and family are working from home, as I'm sure you are and your, you know, the audiences are. So I think a lot of organisations will rethink that working from home policy and think about how they try and adapt and and make it better for some of their employees, right? To have that flexibility of working from home when they need it. So fingers crossed it'll change. But in terms of like the events and stuff, I think that we'll see us as well having more events or seeing more organisations actually pay for their employees to go to these events and allow them to go to them because of the interactions and the learnings they'll see that they're currently missing, I think, right now from just mm -hmm. doing remote working, um, to be honest. So I think there'll be, this, uh, the, there'll be this pent up demand to get some actual face to face interaction after this. I think so. I think so. I think so. So that's I'm feeling that's it all. I'm feeling that already. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, I do. Are you getting outside? I get outside every day, but it's 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 easy now because the streets are almost empty. It's easy yep. for me to still maintain social distancing as I just yep. ride my bike around downtown Chicago. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, is that are you something? Are you able? I'm not sure what the culture is right now in Scotland. Um, are you able to get out of and yeah? So go at the, the moment, grocery um, store and walk around. Yeah, at the moment our lockdown is you can go out for essentials, so the grocery, like medical, that kind of stuff, um, and we're allowed one uh, form of exercise a day to be going outside. So um, thankfully I'm kind of in a rural area, so I can just walk out my door and go up like a kind of back road, a farm track, and just go for a walk and try and keep away from people that way. Oh, that's interesting. When you say you're allowed to go out for exercise once a day, is that something that's enforced? Uh, yes, so our police force have been given powers temporarily to stop you and ask you where you're going and why you're going there and if they deem it non-essential, they're actually fining people at the moment. So. Interesting. Okay, it hasn't come to that in Chicago. They did They did close some parks here because mm. people were, on nice days, people would go down to the lake. There's a big lake next, next to Chicago. And yep. they said, don't, please don't. We strongly advise don't. And people did it anyway. So then they actually you know, put some guards in the parks and said... Yep. Don't go here. But I, I haven't heard yeah. about fines yet. <laughs> we're, um, we're a little bit behind the rest of the, the world, I think. I I think it hit the U.S. a little bit later, so we're still on that exponential up upswing of infections. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, I think from what I understand from America, you guys are so disparate in terms of who runs each of your states as well. There's a bit of confusion about what's best and every state has different is that yeah, right? We're still figuring a lot of things out here. And that's one <laughs> of them. What's the role of the federal government versus what's the role of the states and who's responsible for everything? Uh, yeah. And the other thing is individual rights versus the rights of society to be protected against uh, you know, public health hazards. And there's a yeah. lot of complex issues here. I, I won't. I have strong opinions, but I won't share them on this. <laughs> you, know, can, you can follow me on Twitter and I'll, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll rant there more. <laughs> Uh, this is excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you think we should? Um, one thing that's been interesting, so a lot of my friends still work in frontline IT, right? And I've heard a lot of them postpone their projects. So they've mm. like basically put a change freeze on some of their IT operations, which I completely get. Like They're probably sitting at home miles away from their server room that's usually like sitting behind them or whatever. Um, but I'm interested to hear that some of the projects they put on hold are like upgrade projects. So yeah. things like Windows Server 2008 are still sitting in their data center. But that's like a project they've put on hold right now. They haven't even started it, which is another issue because that obviously went out of support um, in January 2020. But they've now put on those upgrade projects and they've stopped them, which I think is a bit of a security risk um, because it's not supported anymore. And we don't know how long this is going to go on. So... I don't understand some of that thing. So I think some organisations need to think carefully about where they pause things and where they, they spend their time. Because I, me personally, that's a security risk for me and not moving that type of project on. It's probably going to have longer term effects for them and maybe have supportability issues for them trying to run their workforce from home on these older legacy operating systems. So that's... That's something I'm probably going to try and cover, maybe in a blog post or something, to try and, you know, make sure make them aware that these are things that yes, okay, we need to change freeze, but we could still need to do some planning around it. Yeah, I think that's uh, if I understand what I'm talking to infrastructure advocates. Part of your job is to terrify the audience into doing <laughs> the things that they need to do. <laughs> I wouldn't say terrify, maybe spur them on is maybe a better Motivate phrase. Motivate those yeah. to, to, <laughs> yeah. to get up and, uh, and actually run out of the room in the middle of your presentation to go patch their servers. Uh, I'll leave it, yeah. <laughs> if you see that happen, you know you're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, Sarah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for being on my show. No, thank you for having me. It's been good fun. Thank you. And I really love your voice. <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> I'm so grateful to technology because it's introduced me to so many friends, not only just local to me, but worldwide, and I love being able to interact with them and meet them whenever I travel for my job.